Hello and welcome, this is Japan, and this is my Clash at the Castle uh, predictions. I'm doing it a little early. I kind of thought, uh, I mean, we got five matches, that's what everything's been like, so hopefully it doesn't change. Um, I figured, like, maybe if, if something might happen on Raw, but I, I only could see them adding, like, either Logan Paul match or a Grayson Waller and uh, Awesome Fury match on SmackDown, but I really don't think they're going to do that, so I just figured might as well get it out early. Um, but I like the, I got the image for this and I like to show the disrespect. I like Jey Uso. I'm not, uh, that's the first part I'm going to say. Why is he on the poster? Like, he's not there. Why couldn't they use Bailey? Like, come on. Like, are you kidding me? They don't even have Damian Priest, who's the champion. Like, I get Drew McIntyre. That is perfectly fine. He has to be there. He's, you know, Scottish. That is the perfect person. But they don't have Bailey. They should have put Bailey and Piper Nevin over here instead of, uh Bianca and Jade because it would have done that and then they could have put you know Damien over here but why <laughs> the disrespect I, I just had to go on that side tangent real fast because it's just insane also I made myself a little bit of a, a WWE uh um icon I have a I kind of have like the Seth Rollins pose where he just is like naked with the the, the title from Becky's book um I'm just thinking about that now. <laughs> I'm not thinking about it naked. Oh, okay, God. Let's just get to the prediction. Okay, so first off, we're going to start with Bailey. Mine as well. Somebody actually care about Bailey. Bailey versus Piper Niven. This one's a pretty clean, easy pick. It's going to be, of course, Bailey. I, <laughs> I don't know why I was trying to like drum it up or something, but come on. Like, we know that they've been trying to build up Piper Niven, but like, we know that Piper Niven is there because it's her home country like i don't mind them doing this because it, it helps like sell tickets and helps that type of stuff and bailey really didn't have much but come on this is gonna be an easy bailey win um next up we have the tag team titles being defended the women's tag team of for uh, jade cargill and bianca belair versus the unholy union or the witches or whatever which way you want to call them and Shayna baszler and um uh zoe stark now they had the match on on SmackDown or on Rob f between the other two that are the non champions. I kind of felt like that was kind of dumb. Like, I, why did we have that match? Like, I know, or at least like actually have an ending to it. Like, they could have like had Jade and, and Bianca come down and bust heads or something. That would have been better than just like, oh yeah, this is gonna be it. But uh, honestly, with Basler Basler losing on the NXT, uh, just couple days before that and then like going into i guess like getting this win to jelly change it up a little bit i don't know but with her losing and zoe i have think they have zero chance the witches are there the onion holy union because I, I think one of them is scottish i could be wrong one of them i think no they're both i think they're both scottish so so like they you know they make sense put them in the home crowd i think and they they are a good tag team i mean at least i like them as a tag team like their gimmick and all that so i i don't think we have anything to worry about jade and and bianca only lose to one of them turning on each other i don't think the turn would be right here uh closer to SummerSlam, there could have been a possibility but this far out there's no there's no way so yep they're gonna retain this might be one of the closest like i feel like three out of these five matches are pretty easy to know but you never know uh intercontinental championship is hammy zane versus chad gable now they've really like made chad the the villain and i feel like he would be perfect f to 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 take down sammy it's the only thing that i'm feeling is like why would you take the title off sammy right before a canadian ple but I just, I don't think you give Gable another shot. And I also think, like, Gable with uh, him, like, uh, just being in, like, the contract negotiations, I feel like that would have been a big thing that he should have tried to negotiate it. Like, hey, I want this championship. Unless they have some long-term fame for him. I, I just don't see um, him not winning this. But, like, I don't know. It's so 50-50. I feel like... Res I'm going to go with Chad Gable. I'm going to try to wheel it into existence. I feel like Chad would be the better champion. Champion, Sammy is good, and he's had some title defenses, but I just I don't really see him being in that IC area. Like He's he's like more of a main event guy. Obviously, I don't think like he's that main event talent to win a 
bigger championship right now, but like he he likes to be in that main event scene, and I just feel like there's not much of a reason for him to be there. I feel like it's gonna have probably Otis costing Gable if they end up losing this, so that could possibly just set him Gable off to a whole Alpha Academy fan to be completely separate. But I kind of don't like that. I kind of feel like Chad deserves the championship, but. I'm going to go with Chad, but if I'm really thinking what's going to happen, it's going to be Sami Zayn. But that one's probably the 50-50 the on, on anything. Next up, we have Cody Rhodes versus AJ Styles. There's not much to be said here. I think it's an I quit match, so I don't really think, um, you know, like, I, I don't think it's going to be, like, a crazy, crazy match. I feel like, you know, Rhodes is 100% going to win this. I don't think there's, like, any doubt... Um, you know, WWE has kind of put themselves into a point where now anytime Cody's on the PLE and it's non-bloodline related, I think it's automatically going to be, um, that. Now there could be, this could be where maybe the Wyatt six appear and like maybe take out one of them. So then nobody has to actually quit. I feel like this is the PLE to have them appear. That, that is my thing. The, they have to appear here. I don't think we got a QR code on Raw last night. I could be wrong, but I think, like, for sure, they must appear on this PLE. I don't know how they keep dragging this on and making it, like, good if they don't. But 100% Cody wins here. Even if it's by disqualification, Cody wins no matter what. Then, last but certainly not least, definitely the main event for the World Heavyweight title. It'll be Damian Priest versus Drew McIntyre. Um... The crazy thing about this that it's like, you know, everything would line up that this would be Drew's moment, and I think that's why he's not. I think that with the money in the bank being in play soon and the Gunther match at at um SummerSlam, I think they're gonna hold Damian Priest holding on to that that championship through this storm. I think he's gonna be holding it. He's gonna probably have one more match at Money in the Bank. And um, then he'll he'll be in grave danger after that to lose his title. But I just don't see him losing it. I, I feel like we've we've uh, seen him been pretty you know pre- he's pretty dominant right now. And I feel like we've seen Drew you know kind of have his eyes off the off the ball. And I think that's where we're gonna have that happen. I think maybe CM Punk might be involved somehow to really you know basically just keep setting up that feud. That we're going to eventually get, hopefully by SummerSlam, depending on how well uh, CM Punk's coming along. He looks like he's doing good, but that doesn't mean anything when it actually means going out there and wrestling. But yeah, that's my my fan. I don't think we're going to get anything too crazy. I think maybe the Wyatt Six would be the only out-of-the-blue stuff that we're going to get. Um, these five match PLEs are a little interesting, to be honest. Like I haven't, I don't know, I, I haven't been as much of a fan with it on some of them because i feel like that six match actually could be really used like useful and i think this is definitely one where six match could be useful because there's so many other storylines that are going on that we could get just a little bit of uh a little bit more to it like even the street profits kevin owens against the the bloodline 2.0 could have been a cool match to add to here obviously both tag team titles like we were seeing them defended on raws and smackdowns but we haven't seen them in the ple's since the, the start, which we just saw Miz and R-Truth retain against uh, AOP, so they wouldn't really be up. And that's why I said Grayson Waller and, and uh, Austin Fury would be good, and I could see them losing it on a PLE. So, like, that could be a big thing um, to have them, like, lose it at Clash of the Castle if they were going to be added. But I just don't think we're going to get anything else. So uh, five matches, I guess, is going to be what the new normal is for the time being until possibly SummerSlam. I can't see SummerSlam having five matches. Like, that's just too big. Even Money in the Bank, like, I kind of feel like needs a six match because they're going to have the two ladder matches. And, you know, like, they're going to have to put some other stuff on there. But you never know. And if that's the new normal, we'll get used to it. But for right now, those were my predictions. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, Tell me what you guys think in the bottom. And uh, if you're watching this in the past uh, or the future, you'll see if I was was correct. I I, I kind of feel pretty confident with three out of the five. You know, obviously, Damien's the World Heavyweight title and the the IC title are the ones that are a little little funky. They could go either way. But it's been Japan. Bye, guys.